We live in a society. More specifically, I live in a house with a family. A loud one. I don't get a lot of opportunities to record here at home. I kind of have to wait for the stars to align and for everyone to be out of the house. But what if I didn't need it to be quiet? What if I could just type out what I wanted to say and use AI deepfake technology to recreate my voice and record it for me? What if I could create videos and podcasts without ever having to turn on a microphone? That would really be something, wouldn't it? I've been using an AI voiceover tool called Overdub from Descript. Descript is not paying me and this is not a sponsored video. Everything you're about to hear is my actual opinion, good or bad. The concept behind Descript is actually super interesting, but it's a little hard to understand at first glance because it's not like anything you've ever used before. There are kind of three stages of it. When you upload a video or audio file to Descript, it'll parse through that file and automatically transcribe it for you. It's not perfect, but it gets it pretty close and then you can make minor edits to correct it. Now, automatic transcription on its own is a very compelling feature. That's pretty awesome to have. But that's only the beginning. It gets better. Once the media is transcribed, you can actually edit it just by changing the text. It remembers the timestamps for every piece of text, so when you move the text around, it'll edit the audio or video file behind the scenes and recreate it for you. Normally you have to go into editing software like this and chop things up and move them around based on the audio waveforms. And it's kind of a pain in the neck because just looking at the waveform, you can't really see what it's saying. You don't see the words that were spoken, you just see the shape of the sound. In Descript, you can actually edit the footage based on the spoken words themselves. It's nuts. Watch this. In Descript, you can actually edit the footage based on the spoken words themselves. It's nuts. Watch this. Watch this. In Descript, you can edit the footage based on the spoken words. It's nuts. This might be the most innovative and interesting thing to happen in video editing since digital video editing first became a thing. This is a huge concept. Now I'm not saying that Descript does this perfectly. It's a little quirky at times, but bless its heart, it tries really hard and it does a really good job. This is usable, you can actually use this to edit videos, but they didn't stop there. As a little helper for video and audio editors, they actually created a tool that can learn your voice and recreate it. It's basically deep fake for your voice. It's an artificial intelligence voiceover tool that sounds like you. They call it overdub, and when you put it on top of everything else that Descript is doing, this is an insane package. Now I tried this before with Resemble AI and got some pretty ridiculous results. Take a look. So I think Resemble AI has a So I hope that my thing so we're going to see if the overdub tool from Descript can pull this off better than Resemble AI did. I'm really hoping it can, and we're going to find out in a minute. Now to be fair, AI voices are not perfect yet. If you listen to any significant amount of an AI voice, you're eventually going to be able to tell that you're listening to a fake voice. That said, we're still going to put Descript to a brutal test. We're going to see if it can create an entire podcast in my voice without me ever turning on a microphone. I can't wait to see what happens. The practical day-to-day -day use of the overdub feature is for going back to audio where you misspoke or you pronounced something wrong or said the wrong number and you want to correct it without having to re-record it. It's just meant to pass up little bits of audio without the audience noticing. And we're going to test that in just a second, but first I'm going to show you how you teach it to speak in your voice. Welcome to my closet. Artificial intelligence has to be trained. You have to give it a bunch of samples of your voice so that it can learn not just the phonetics and pronunciation, but also your intonation and pacing and other factors. And it needs a lot of examples to do that. The more examples you give it, the better the pronunciation is going to be. Descript gives you a predefined script that they want you to read in order to train the overdub voice. I think it's scripts from the show Planet Earth, which is kind of weird because it makes me want to read it like a nature documentary. You'll want to do it with a good microphone in a quiet room. If you do it in a place that has a bunch of reverb or junk noise that's going to come out in your recordings and it's going to show up in your artificial overdub voice. So I'm going to hide out here in my closet. All the clothes and stuff are good at absorbing sound and the air conditioner is not too loud in here. The penguins stay when all other creatures have fled because each guards a treasure. A single egg rested on the top of its feet and kept warm beneath the downy bulge of its stomach. <laughs> 
So I read through the main training script, which took me about 40 minutes to finish, and then I uploaded it to Descript. It took most of a day to process, but now it's finished. I have officially cloned my voice. I'm a little nervous. I'm nervous because if this works, it's kind of creepy. It's super useful, but creepy. And if it doesn't work, well, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with the rest of this video. So cross your fingers. Testing. Testing. Is this thing working? Can you hear me? I hope this works. Well, that sounded a lot like me. This might actually work. Okay, now we're going to put this to the test in two different ways. First, we're going to use it as intended, patching up some pre-recorded audio, tweaking some words so I don't have to go back and re-record it. And then second, we're totally going to abuse and exploit this thing and see if we can recreate the secret fantasy of every content creator, which is to be able to create recorded content without actually having to record yourself. I have no idea how this is going to go. We're going to find out. Here's a quick recording I made earlier using my own voice. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. Now, William Carlos Williams is a pretty good poet, but I think there are some opportunities for improvement here. For example, instead of a red wheelbarrow, what if it's a Ford F-150 Lightning? And instead of white chickens, what if it's velociraptors? Can Descript help us transform the world of poetry? Let's find out. So much depends upon a Ford F-150 Lightning glazed with rainwater beside the white velociraptors. It wasn't flawless, but that was pretty good. If you slip that kind of audio editing into a larger work, it's likely that you can get away with it without much of your audience knowing. Okay, now the real test. It would be amazing if I could create an extended passage of text using my own voice without having to record it on a microphone. Then I wouldn't need the house to be quiet. I could just type something out and then I have content. Theoretically, this would let me create a ton of additional content. I could dig up old articles that I've written and turn them into podcasts. I could even turn them into videos. I can do a quick intro on camera and then let Descript do the rest of the video without me showing my face. I don't know if I actually want to do this, but it would be interesting to find out if we can do it. Now, Descript's overdub feature wasn't built for exactly this, so it's not fair to expect that this is going to turn out perfectly. But still, we have to put this to the test and find out how well it does. I've grabbed an excerpt from an article I wrote some years ago about product design. It's exactly the kind of thing I would dig up and turn into a podcast if I had enough time. I'm going to put this excerpt into Descript and then use overdub overdub using my voice to recreate the entire thing. From scratch, no recording, no microphone. So I want you to watch this all the way through and then let me know your thoughts on how Descript handled this using their overdub feature. And it should also be noted that I only did one of their training scripts. There are also two additional training scripts, so if I put another hour and a half toward this, I can better train the voice and get even higher quality out of it. And I'm going to do exactly that in a follow-up video to this one. There's a reason why pretty much every attempt to build a utopian community has failed. It seems like every architecturally minded genius eventually takes on the mental exercise of designing a perfect community, but none has really succeeded. Almost inevitably, they wind up becoming struggling tourist traps or half-finished ghost towns. Some achieve an awkward but functional equilibrium. The luckiest among them are probably those that remained unbuilt fantasies. The main problem is, as usual, that people are complicated. Anytime someone feels like they've got humanity all figured out, they're ultimately proven wrong. They always miss something or hundreds of things. If you live in a master planned housing community, for example, you know that feeling. It's probably a very pretty and convenient community, but deep down, you feel the artifice. It feels like you're living in the matrix, despite all the careful consideration put into making you feel exactly not that way. It still does, and it bugs you a little. Now consider the feelings stirred by some of the world's most loved cities. New York City, Paris, Bangkok, San Francisco, London, Singapore, Montreal, and so on. From a master planning perspective, these cities are inefficient, outdated, and confusing. They're suboptimal in thousands of ways. They're everything utopian projects try to fix. Yet somehow, they just work. Day after day, year after year, they work, and people love them. The reason these cities work is generally because they started small. Cities like these typically start as a few neighboring huts and farms. They eventually grow into a little village, then a town, and so on. Instead of trying to answer the question, how can we become a huge city? They simply dealt with their issues one day at a time, evolving gradually over time based on the needs of the moment. At each point, they're creatively solving their real issues with real resources based on real priorities. There are always some inefficiencies and rework required along that path, but they were complete and functioning communities at every point along the way. Product design works the same way. If you try to build directly toward an idealized end state, 
you'll have something partially finished and non-functional through the whole process. And then the needs will probably have changed or were different from your assumptions by the time you finish anyway. Instead, you should start a product the same way a great city starts. You find a good location, put some huts near each other, and then you solve for the problems of the day. Over and over and over again, 